To meet today's high production standards, producing drum tracks usually involves several techniques, including live recording, programming, sampling, audio quantizing, and sound replacement. In Logic Pro X, you can speed up the process by taking advantage of the drummer features, along with its companion software instruments, drum kit designer, and drum machine designer. In this lesson, you will produce virtual indie rock, hip hop, and electro house drum tracks. After selecting a genre and choosing the best drummer for your project, you will adjust the performance, making the drummer play busier patterns or simpler ones, louder or softer, and changing the feel, almost like a producer would communicate with a real drummer in a recording session. Drummer is a Logic Pro X feature that allows you to produce drum tracks using a virtual drummer with its own personal playing style. Its performance is placed in the drummer regions on a drummer track. Using the drummer editor, you can edit the performance data contained in a drummer region. Each virtual drummer also comes with its own drum kit software instrument plugins, drum kit designer to emulate live acoustic drums, or drum machine designer for electronic sampled and synthesized drums. So first let's open a new project and add a drummer track. So from the tracks dialog, tracks, new track or new drummer track and select drummer. And a drummer track is created along with an eight bar drummer region. At the bottom of the main window, the drummer editor opens, allowing you to edit the performance in the drummer region that is selected here in the workspace. The track is named SoCal, South Cal um, California, and the drummer is called Kyle, which is the name of the default drum kit and the default virtual drummer in the rock category. The project tempo is set to 110 BPM, which suits this selected music genre. Let's have a listen. So the drummer starts with a crash cymbal and plays a straightforward rock pattern. At the end of the drummer part, drummer region, we get a, a fill which will lead into the next section. So if we control option drag over the region or zoom in up here or press Z, we can zoom in and we can see here we've got the crash symbol. Down here we've got kick and snare patterns. And along here we've got our hi-hats. So the drummer region displays hits uh, as triangles on lanes, roughly emulating the look of a drummer hit or a drum hit on an audio waveform. So to create a cycle range of the desired length, we can select and press U, and then we can adjust this accordingly by dragging the end, like so, and the cycle range is created. If we want to turn the cycle range on and off, we can click here or we can press C on the keyboard. Each drummer has their own playing style and drum kit, and those combine to create a unique drum sound. So before you start fine tuning the drummer's performance, you need to choose the right drummer for the song. So in the library, drummers are categorized by music genres. By default, choosing a new drummer means loading a new virtual drum kit and updating drummer region settings but sometimes you may want to keep the same drum kit or changing the drummer, which we will do in this next exercise. So if you press Y on your keyboard, you open the library and the library lets you access drummers and drum kit patches. If we move the pointer over to Anders, a help tag appears, which describes the drummer's playing style and the sound of their drum kit. 
and we can continue that by placing the pointer over other rock drummers to read their descriptions. So let's choose Jesse. And in the library, Jesse's drum kit is Smash drum kit. So in the workspace, the drummer region updates to display Jesse's performance. And in the control bar here, we can adjust the tempo if we so wish, wish to something more appropriate and have a listen. The drummer editor shows the settings for the selected drummer. That's this bit down here. A yellow ruler allows you to position the playhead anywhere within the region so you can click the play button to the left of the ruler to preview the drummer. Jesse's performance is a little bit more syncopated as you can hear. So let's go for something a little bit more straightforward. So in the library, I'm going to open this out a little bit so I can see this bit here. Alternative, I'm going to click alternative and choose the first drummer called Aiden. So Aiden loads and I'm going to change the BPM to 100 and have a listen. And while the region is playing back in cycle mode, we can try selecting other regions here in the beat presets and have a listen to those. So you can see when you click a preset, the region settings update and you can hear another performance from the same drummer. Without stopping playback, let's click the rock track and then choose a different drummer. So play, rock, max. If a dialogue explaining how to keep region settings when changing the drummer appears, like this one, select do not show this message again and click change drummer. Now we're going to change the project tempo to 140 BPM. Have a listen. So although Max's hyperactive performance is not quite what we're looking for, the drum kit sounds punchy. So let's assign the first drummer, Kyle, to play on Max's drum kit easy beat here. In the library, we're going to click the padlock icon in the sound section here. The current patch is locked and changing the drummer will no longer load a new drum kit. In the library, click Kyle Pop Rock. Kyle is now playing Max's Easy Bay drum kit and the project tempo updates on it. It hasn't updated, but sometimes that'll update to uh, the original BPM for that kit. Let's make Kyle a bit slower. Oh, the last bit performance is too fast. Let's have a listen. So now we have a drummer that plays a straightforward style and with a punchy drum kit sound and set to a tempo, tempo that will drive our track. So now we're ready to customize the performance. In a recording session with a live drummer, the artist, the producer, or the musical director must communicate their vision of the completed song. They may ask the drummer to play behind or ahead of the beat to change the feel of the groove, switch from the hi-hat to the ride cymbal during the chorus, or play a drum fill in a specific location. In Logic Pro X, 
Editing a drum performance is almost like giving instructions to a real drummer. So in this next exercise, you will play a drum region in cycle mode as you adjust the drummer settings. So in the workspace, make sure that the drum region is still selected. And in the drummer editor, click the play button. And next to the yellow presets, there is an XY pad here with a yellow puck. And you're going to adjust that to adjust the loudness and complexity of the drum pattern. As you position the puck, you may need to wait for the region to update depending on your computer. If you continuously drag the puck without stopping, the region will not update. So you need to move it and let it go and then the region will update. So if you position the puck farther to the right, the drum pattern becomes more complex and as you move the puck towards the top of the pad, the drummer plays louder. So try placing the puck in the four corners for total extremities. So as the drummer plays softer, he closes the hi-hat and switches from hitting the snare on the skin to play in a rim click where he only hits the rim of the drum. As he plays louder he opens the hi-hat and starts playing the rim shots hitting the skin and the rim simultaneously for accent. So let's make the drummer play a solid straightforward beat in the drummer region which will be used for the first verse of the song and we're going to just settle for a puck position where the drummer plays a rather simple but loud pattern. If the kick drum is still a little bit busy and then to the right of the XY pad we can choose from several kick and snare pattern variations down here. So let's drag these across. This is useful in a multi-track project where you select the follow checkbox, a pop-up menu appears instead of the kick snare slider and the menu lets you choose a track to influence what the drummer plays on a kick and snare. So quite often I'll use the follow button and then from here if I had more tracks I would, if I had a bass track I would choose the bass track and then that would analyze the bass track and um, put the appropriate kick and snare pattern in depending on the on the on the bass part which is quite a neat function you can also do the same for the hi hat as well if you keep your eye on the region in the workspace here let's try now putting different fills in And you can see by dragging the fills button you can see additional fills appearing or disappearing depending on where you move this control. In the drummer editor click the details knob button to display three knobs. Below the hi-hat knob deselect automatic if it's selected, deselected. 
And now we can drag the hi-hat knob up to open it a little bit. So in the tracks area, just adjust your zoom level to see some empty space after the drum region here. And now position the pointer over the drummer track and click the plus sign here. And you can see that a new eight bar drummer region is created at bar six. The new region is selected by default and the drummer editor displays its region settings. So this corresponds with this. So let's make the drummer switch from playing the hi-hat to playing a cymbal during the chorus. So in the drummer editor, if we just turn off the details function, we go back to the drummer editor window here. And we can see here we've got some percussion and we've got our cymbals, we've got toms. So these are turned off at the moment. These, these are the bits, the elements that are turned on. So if we just clicked now a cymbal that changes to symbols and hopefully as it transitions from one to the other it should go from hi-hat to symbols. In this next exercise you will lay out the song structure and populate the drummer track with drummer regions for the whole song. So using the arrangement track, you will now create arrangement markers for all of the selections of your song. You'll adjust their length positions and order and fill in all the new sections with drummer regions. So what we first need to do at the top of the track header, go to uh, global tracks. So that's G on the keyboard. Or if I go to tracks, global tracks, show global tracks, we get this window here. So let me just clean up my desktop a little bit so you can see. So here's my global track, so that's G on the keyboard. And just looking at this top one here, you should have a, an arrangement track right at the top. Now I'm gonna get rid of my drum parts. I'm gonna take it back to a little, sort of a blank setting. So with the uh, arrangement tracks, we can actually turn these on and off if we control click anywhere in global tracks. We can turn things on and off as we see fit. So let's leave those on. And here in the arrangement track, let's just make that a little bit bigger. So the arrangement track has a little add marker here. And if I click that uh, marker, what it'll do is it will create an, uh, an eight bar measure, if you like, which is called intro. And that creates that at bar one. You can't move it, it'll create it at bar one. So by default, arrangement markers are eight bars long and they are placed one after the other, starting from the beginning of the, sorry, starting from the end of the last arrangement marker. So you can't have a gap in between. So if I want to rename that intro, I can click here. I can choose a name or create my own name. And if I wanted to ch change the length, I can just pick it up at the bottom and make it longer or shorter. And we can see the length is displayed there in the help tag. So that is indeed four bars long. Now, if I go back here, here and I click the plus sign, I'll now get, again, an eight bar selection straight after the last arrangement marker, so there's no gap in between. And I can, again, resize that accordingly. And now let's add a chorus as well. So it kind of guesses what, what the next bit is going to be, but of course you can rename it depending on your song. And you can keep going. So if you've already got the arrangement of the song, you can use this arrangement marker to 
uh, as, a, as a visual guide when you're recording uh, so that you can see where the changes are going to be which is really very helpful but also when it comes to creating drummer parts if you start off with the arrangement track and then you add drummer parts what happens is it if you like analyzes these names and comes up with what it thinks is an appropriate drummer part so if I go to and press and hold control so I'm pressing hold control and on the drummer track if I go to populate with drummer regions that will now populate my arrangement with what it thinks sh should correspond with each of these parts we can change the length of arrangement markers at this point but the drums won't update with it if I wanted now to update the drums I delete them press an old control populate and that will update correspond to this up here and don't forget down the bottom here you have the resize function and at the top here you have your loop function when recording a live drummer in a studio the engineer often positions microphones on each drum this allows control over the recorded sound of each drum so the engineer can individually equalize or compress the sound of each kit piece the producer or engineer may also want the drummer to try different kicks or snares or to experiment with hitting the top cymbals when recording a live drummer in a studio the engineer often positions microphones on each drum this allows control over the recorded sound of each drum so the engineer or producer can individually equalize or compress the sound of each kit piece in logic when using drummer the sounds of each drum are already recorded however you can still use several tools to customize the drum kit and adjust the sound of each drum smart controls are a set of knobs and switches that are pre-mapped to the most important parameters of the plugins on the channel strip of the selected track so now we're going to have a look at smart controls and smart controls are here this function here so you can use this function to turn smart controls on and off or you can press B on the keyboard when you press B the smart control pane opens at the bottom of the main window replacing the drummer editor the smart controls are divided into three sections mix compression and effects so in the mix section six knobs allow you to balance the levels of each of the drums to the right of each knob is a button that lets you mute or turn on each of the drums the corresponding drum so if we just create a, a loop and I can do that by clicking and holding the arrangement and dragging it up let's turn some bits off try a bit with some snare on And of course we can adjust the volume of each individual element as well in the effects section you'll see a tone control so as you drag the the knob up and down the drum sound change timbre and become brighter at the top of the the top left channel strip in the inspector you'll see the EQ curve change in the uh, channel strips EQ display reflecting changes made to the channel EQ so let's open up the channel EQ and move this tone control play it and the compression section here works on a similar principle to this effects section so let's open the compressor 
and let's move the compressor knob up and down as we play. Drum Kit Designer is a software instrument plugin that plays drum samples triggered by the drummer. It allows you to customise the drum kit by choosing from a collection of drums and cymbals and tuning and dampening them. So I'm going to close down my compressor and in the inspector window here just click drum kit. Click the snare and you can hear the snare sample being triggered and the snare stays lit and the rest of the drum kit is in shadow. To the left a snare panel containing different snares or different choice of uh, three snares appears and to the right an edit panel uh, appears including three setting knobs. So the left panel shows only a limited selection of snares. To gain access to the entire collection of drum samples included with Logic Pro X you need to choose a producer kit from the library. In the control bar, click the library button here or press Y. And to the left of the inspector, the library opens, listing all the patches for the selected track. So here we have East Bay, as that's the patch that's currently selected. But if we scroll, scroll down to the bottom, we'll see producer kits. So click that and now look for East Bay Plus, which is this one here and select that. The plugin window now displays a channel EQ plugin, so let's reopen the drum kit designer. So we'll close the channel EQ plugin and at the top of the library here, move the pointer over the drum kit icon and click the sliders symbol that appears as you hover over. And the drum designer plugin window opens. So the East Bay plus kit sounds the same as East Bay but allows a wider range of options when it comes to customizing the kit. So now if we click the snare function you'll see on the left hand side some additional snares and on the right hand side some additional functions down here. As we hover over a snare if we just go to the I for information we'll see a ah, sorry you have to click we'll see a detailed description of the each of the snares and also we can trigger each of them as well like so and we can change these on the fly as the kits play in so I'll turn the volume down a little bit. And if I now click the kick drum, kick drums appear and I can do the same thing. If I wanted to dampen, tune or change the gain of the kick drum, I can do so here. We can also work with electronic drum kits as well in Logic. So if we now go to the back to the library and click the padlock just to open that and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And now in the drummer section we're going to choose hip hop and we're going to choose Morris Boom Bap and change the drummer 
and let's have a let's choose a region let's have a listen So you can hear that Morris plays a very loose swing hip hop groove and the project tempo has changed to 135 although it sounds like he's playing half that so maybe adjust the tempo to 168 In the inspector, the drum kit designer has been replaced with a drum machine designer, which has been inserted at the top of the drummer channel strip. It looks a little bit different. It looks like this. And we'll come back to that in a minute, but you can see there's shakers and rides and hi-hats and kicks and all sorts of things going on. And as I play it, you can see each of the regions being triggered. You'll also notice some changes being made to the drum editor. You'll see that the beat presets and the puck pad remain the same, but over here the drum kit has been replaced and we now have percussion, shakers and hi-hats and kick, snare and claps. And if we go to the details function, we'll see a new set of functions here which we can experiment with. And if we go to humanize, The best way to demonstrate that it's like a feel function so if I just put my song position pointer right on the bar and zoom in if I move this humanize function you'll see what happens so as I move it to zero it's on the beat if I want it to play a little bit later I can move move the humanize feel to give it um, a more of a laid-back feel We've also got a swing function, which moves certain elements. Can you see that bit moving as I'm changing the setting here? Let's move the swing now. So we can make it more or less tight, depending on what we're after. When we're working with drum machines, quite often we want to see each element laid out on a piano roll or a drum roll so that we can move individual MIDI elements uh, on, on a piano roll. When we work with drum machines, quite often we want to see each element laid out on a piano roll or a drum roll. We can easily do that in Logic by selecting a region. So let's say take this region here if I control click I'll get this function here convert convert to MIDI region and that then changes that into a more recognizable uh, layout for those that like to work with MIDI you'll see in the piano roll notes are represented by beams on a grid the beams are positioned across a vertical piano roll that shows the MIDI note pitches. And you can see each of the elements being triggered. So if we look at our, go back to our drum machine designer, we'll see that there's a lot of samples loaded, but only so many being triggered. course if we wanted to trigger other ones we'll see the names corresponding along here to each of these samples and we can with the pencil tool which is my command click tool so I hit command and I get a pencil tool I can start to draw in additional notes so now in my drum machine designer let's choose this kick let's just solo it you can of course mute it but when we select it and we go to our library 
we'll see that in our library it shows us a list of all the kick drums available to us so if I select and play I can change kick drums and also with the kick selected the smart controls for that pane open here if I then click on snare that then loads up my snare library and I can do a similar thing here if I just go up to that image there and click that just resets there we go that resets now so that gives me my smart controls for the channel strip as I showed you earlier